My name is Vera Scott. I'm a senior lecturer here at the School of Public Health. The session that we're going to be doing today looks at health system frameworks that support primary health care. So far in the module, you'll have been introduced to the principles of primary health care, and there will have been a number of examples of how we apply the primary health care approach in different programs. What we want to do in this particular presentation is now extend that understanding and think about how we might apply the primary health care approach in the organization of health systems generally. So I would like to ask you just to take a couple of moments to jot down a few ideas about what you think a health system is all about. This is an exercise that some of your colleagues did um, when they came to the face-to-face -face teaching here at summer school. Um, and I'd like to share some of the ideas that they put forward and you can compare them to the ideas that, that you've come up with. Um, some colleagues spoke about a health system being a set of different activities, uh, services that are being offered in various settings such as the community or in primary care facilities or in hospitals. And there was talk about these services um, spanning a range of different kinds, so some are curative, others preventive, others promotive of good health. Other colleagues um, included in their definitions uh, a more people-centered focus and spoke about the importance of different actors. Um, and this is something which has been a theme um, at the recent um, uh, Health System Global Conference in 2014, um, the theme was people-centered health systems and, um, and there's been a move to actually highlight the importance of different people and relationships and the values that those people have. Um, in our group, other colleagues have spoken about the different levels of a health service, um, different levels of facilities, uh, different levels of, of management, uh, district management, provincial management, national uh, government um, and departments of health. There was also talk of the interconnectedness uh, between these different levels and the different sets of activities. Um, and so uh, we thought about what the word system meant and we recognized that within a system there are linkages and that that is something that is quite important to acknowledge within the health system. We also said that the health system is not just public health system, that the private sector is also a very important player and we debated the role that government has in setting policy which affects the private as well as the public sector. And not only did we look at the public sector, we also looked at the role of, of non-profit organisations in providing um, health services. Another issue which you might be interested in is that we did debate the difference between what is a health service and what is a health system. We decided that a health service was perhaps more to do with the organization that delivers the health services, um, either in community or in facilities, whereas the health system is broader than that. It's what the health service is part of, and it encompasses um, the other sectors uh, that are working towards health as well. Here we have an example of a health system framework which is taken from uh, 1989, it's, it's the work of, of Rumer, and he proposed this as a model of the national health system um, in the UK. Um, I show it to you because it's interesting to see how he proposed a health system should be thought of, um, and the relevance is that the way in which we understand health systems um, is very important because it informs what we then do if we're thinking about health system strengthening. So he saw health systems as, uh, as responding to health needs. Um, there's then a box in the centre, and at this very centre of that there's organisation. So he said it was important to look at how health services were being organised. Um, they had to be resourced. And, um, and here he was thinking in terms of staff and infrastructure and medical supplies and vaccinations. Um, and then at the bottom we have economic uh, support. So that would really be the financing resources. 
um, at the top there's the management. Those people who are responsible for, for working within the organizational structure to use the resources and manage those resources towards service provision, which is the final of the blocks within that box. And of course, the health service is trying to, um, the health system in this case, is trying to impact on the health of the population. Um, although this was a, an early model, some of these ideas are still very prevalent when we talk about health systems and health system strengthening. If we move forward, um, we can see that in the last sort of 10 to 15 years, there's been a lot of interest in health system thinking. And I'd like to talk to you just briefly about some of the landmark publications um, that have influenced the global debates around health systems. In 2000, we had the World Health Report on Health Systems, which looked at improving performance. And this was a very, very controversial report that came out. It was the first time that it was suggested that it might be possible to compare the performance of health systems across different countries. And so we have the health service, the health sorry, system in the United States being compared with that in Cuba, for example. And you can imagine that that didn't necessarily go down well. Um, although some of the indicators that were used have been questioned, it did bring to the, globe, to the sort of global attention the fact that um, that it's important to not just accept a health system, but actually critically look at how it's performing and try and improve that. The next um, report which um, has been very influential is the World Health Report of 2007 entitled Everyone's Business, Strengthening Health Systems to Improve Outcomes. And that's really a refined version of the 2000 report. Um, then in 2008, we have a rep the World um, Health Report focused particularly on primary health care. Um, it was called Primary Health Care Now More Than Ever. And what this report does is suggest that the primary health care approach, um, the primary health care approach should be, should be used to inform um, how health systems are, um, are developed. Um, so that the primary health care approach uh, becomes the kind of like philosophy in f uh, informing um, health system development. Um, in 2010, there was a focus on financing and universal coverage. And this, again, is very, a very important aspect of health systems. Where does the money come from? Who are we trying to provide coverage for? Um, and then in 2010, uh, there's a report that looks at monitoring health systems and health system strengthening. Within your reader, um, you will um, <coughs> find an article which was written by Van Ullman and um, Bruno Marshall and colleagues, uh, which is entitled Health System Frameworks in Their Political Context, Framing Divergent Agendas. And what this article does um, and uh, this particular slide is taken from the article, is that it looks at the general social, economic and political context um, from the 1940s all the way through to 2012. And then within that, it looks at the different global health institutions and, uh, and the various reports, some of which I've already uh, mentioned to you. And, um, and then it looks at how... Um, how this has influenced the thinking about health systems. So in 1948, we have the creation of WHO and, um, and the WHO Declaration of Health, which is a very broad definition suggesting that health uh, includes um, general uh, mental, physical uh, well-being. Um, so in 1948, we have um, the formation of the WHO and we have the WHO Declaration of Health, which defines health as the, um, as the mental and physical well-being. And that's a very broad definition um, of health. Um, 
During the 1960s, um, many African uh, countries are in a post-colonial um, stage of development and, um, and health system thinking broadened um, with the understanding that, um, that it's necessary to grow beyond medical and technical um, interventions to actually improve the health of populations. Um, in 1948, we have the Alma Arta Declaration. Um, this is then followed by a period of health sector reforms. And if you look at the international arena, what you see is that there's an increase in the number of, of international uh, players. Um, that um, uh, Sorry, an increase in the number of, of, of different significant reports around health systems. So we have, um, after the Alma Arta Declaration, we have... Uh, selective primary health care in 1979. We have the UNICEF focus on, on the selective approach with Gobi FFF. Um, in 1986, we have the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion. Um, and um, another significant report uh, in 1993, the World Development Report on Investing um, in Health. What's interesting in the 1990s, and this is of course the era of HIV, is that we see that, there, that there's a sharp increase in the number of, of actors. Up until now, it's been WHO and UNICEF. And now we see some of the global health initiatives, the Global Fund, Gavi, PEPFAR, um, the Gates Foundation, for example, actually beginning to influence the thinking on, on what a health system is and what a health system should be doing. And, um, and the, the article then talks about the influence that this has had um, uh, uh, in more recent years. So from the year 2000 onwards, what we see is a change in the actor landscape. We see a sharp focus on health system performance, and that's measured in different ways. And we also see the emerging understanding of complexity in health systems. And, um, and this goes to the fact that, um, that different levels and different services are interrelated um, and that they're linkages and that improving one part of the health system actually has very interesting repercussions on, on, on other parts of the health system so that we need to actually think about the whole. Here is a definition which comes from the 2007 WHO report, what is a health system? And they define it as all organizations, people and actions whose primary intent is to promote, restore or maintain health. And they then further explain that it includes the efforts to influence determinants of health as well as more direct health improving activities. Um, so, therefore, it's more than the pyramid of publicly owned facilities that deliver personal health services, which is what many of us think of, and that would really be more uh, the definition of a health service. A health system is broader than that. It includes, for example, a mother caring for a sick child at home. So she's not formally employed by the health service. She's not being trained as a community health worker. But she is providing care. She's a mother and she's caring for her sick child. It includes the private providers. It includes not just health services, but services aimed at changing behavior. It includes the vector control campaigns. Um, we're interested in health financing. So, and, and, and how health fi is financed has a big influence on the health system. So it includes health insurance organizations. It includes the occupational health and, and safety legislation. So it's a very wide field of actors. And then the report also speaks about the intersectoral action by health staff taken to... Um, to work with other sectors, for example, the Ministry of Education, to improve female education, because we know that by improving female education, we're improving the health outcomes of children. This is a, a well-established determinant of child health. The WHO framework, health system framework from 2007, introduces us to a concept of building blocks, and it sets out six building blocks 
which could be understood as subsystems um, of the health system. So there's the health service delivery, um, but then also HR, health information systems, medical products, vaccines and technologies, health financing system, and then leadership and government and governance. And here we have um, the diagram taken from the report, and many of you might be familiar with this. And you see on the left we have the system building blocks. And what is hoped is that with through action on these different building blocks, we will then be able to improve access to health services, we'll be able to improve coverage, and um, and hopefully also the quality of services and the safety of those services rendered. And that will then help us to achieve our overall goals and outcomes. <clears throat> and you will notice that the first is improved health. Uh, but then we also have social goals. We want the health service to be responsive to the population served. Um, it's important to have that as a trust because a health system is also a social institution. Uh, we want there to be social and financial risk protection so that becoming ill does not mean your financial ruin. It does not mean that you then have to spend all your assets on seeking health care. And, um, and in the WHO framework, one of the goals is also improved efficiency within the health system. The WHO um, <coughs> uh, building blocks have been very influential. Um, but there has also been some critique of them. And here there's, uh, we have a, a quote from uh, a publication called Health Systems Thinking. Um, it was put out by the Alliance for Health Policy and System Research. And, uh, and it says, the building blocks alone do not constitute a system any more than a pile of bricks constitute a functional building. It is the multiple relationships and interactions among the blocks how one affects and influences the others and is in turn affected by them that convert these blocks into a system. Um, so what, uh, what they're saying really is that it's no good building up your, your, your HR capacity and, um, and finding that you can now recruit staff, you can train them, you can place them in facilities, but then to find that actually that facility um, doesn't have a drug supply that's reliable. So the staff are there, but they don't have the drugs to treat the clients. Um, similarly, what use is a, a strong and functional health information system if the management is not able to use that information and if the management hasn't been able to influence what information is being collected? So the building blocks on their own are not sufficient. There needs to be uh, a dynamic relationship and interaction between the building blocks. Um, De Savigny and Adam, um, in, the, in this publication, System Thinking, put forward a different framing for a health system. And you'll notice that the outside circles um, all have the same labels as the WHO building blocks. So we have governance and information and financing, uh, etc. But they're all related, interrelated. And at the center, um, they've highlighted the importance of people um, and relationships and the values and expectations and roles that hold the health system together. Here we have um, a framework uh, that's been put out by Management Sciences for Health. And again, if you look at that green circle, you'll see how influential the building blocks have been because, again, we have the same labels as the six building blocks. Uh, but here it's framed in terms of leading and management to achieve results. Um, and they've looked at how managers need to be skilled and motivated to lead and manage the health service um, and how that drives the improved system performance. Um, they also acknowledge the role of other actors and so there's a triangle there in the dotted green line which looks at the role of government and providers including the private sector um, and clients and, and they extend that to include families and communities and the results that they suggest we should be looking at is increased access and use of quality health services and that this would then bring about 
the desired uh, improvement in health outcomes. Um, the third framework that I would like to show you is one um, which has been proposed by Van Ullman um, in a different publication. This one uh, looks at um, uh, what they propose to be a health system dynamics framework. And, um, and again, you will recognize the influence of the building blocks. So in the resource block, we have the infrastructure and supplies, knowledge and information, human resources and finances. Those are four of the building blocks um, from the WHO framework. But what's interesting about this framework is that they actually highlight the importance of service delivery. And whereas in the WHO framework, we have all those building blocks in a sense having equal importance, this framework says no, the really important thing is the service delivery. And four of those building blocks are really to do with how we resource service delivery. And, um, and they then also highlight the importance of leadership and governance in deciding how those resources are organized and managed to ensure that service delivery is appropriate and um, effective and efficient. Um, and they specify the outcome slightly differently. They talk about universal access and coverage, quality of care and responsiveness, um, with the goals being improved health and social protection. What this framework also does is that it brings in the population and says that the communities that we serve, the populations that we serve, are also part of the health system. And so you have them in the, um, there at the bottom. And a round of all of this, we have the context, because the health system uh, works differently in different countries because of the socio-economic and political context, and that that is a crucial part of understanding a health system. And if we're working towards health system improvement, we need to understand that context and, and work with it. Um, here I have um, so the key findings from the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, which reminds us that, um, that if we are to improve health, we need to improve the conditions of daily life, the circumstances in which people are born, grow, live, work and age, that we need to tackle the inequitable distribution of power, money and resources, the structural drivers and conditions of daily life. And so if we are to, in our thinking about health systems, um, we need to ensure that our model is actually able to embrace um, this new thinking. Um, and the third um, finding is, is around the importance of measuring um, and evaluating action, expanding our knowledge base, developing a workforce that's trained in social determinants of health and raising public awareness about the social determinants of health. And I suppose that also then speaks to the fact that the health service, the health system is not a static thing. It changes as our understandings change, as we make new discoveries, as we learn more about the social determinants of health, the health system actually needs to change shape to take that new knowledge on board. Um, we're interested in, in primary health care and how primary health care can inform a health system framework. And here we have a quote from the Alma Arta which speaks about the importance of intersectoral action. The Alma Arta also speaks about the importance of community engagement as a means of ensuring that we are in increasing the participation of communities. Um, as a way of reducing vulnerabilities and, and improving um, their, uh, their voice, their ability. Sorry, it's the wrong slide now, just getting back to place. Um, so we're talking about... So community participation is important in terms of improving uh, participation, increasing self-reliance of communities, ensuring that communities have a voice and can take part in political processes um, as a way of improving their health. Here at the School of Public Health, we've worked with um, some ideas around a health system framework, and you can see that 
Um, we've, we, we too have worked with the WHO building blocks, but we've organized them slightly differently and we've put service delivery on top. But what we have felt is very important if we think about a health system framework that supports a primary health care approach or a primary health care approach that informs a health system framework is to actually say that, that these pillars or these building blocks need to be supported by community empowerment and by intersectoral action to address social determinants. And, um, and we've also acknowledged the important role that people play um, in making this happen. Um, so communities, health workers, um, and workers in other sectors. Finally, I'd just like to leave you with some thoughts about how we might evaluate a health system that's based on a primary health care approach. Um, here are just some indicators that we might look at or some questions that we might want to ask. How aligned to primary health care principles is the health system? To what extent is the health system organized so that it benefits people? To what extent is it equitable? Does it reach out to meet the needs of those who are marginalized and most disadvantaged? To what extent are services and programs appropriate to need as identified from population-based surveillance? So we need to understand the burden of disease in a particular context. And then we need to ask, is the health system actually geared towards addressing these particular problems? How acceptable are services? Um, are they culturally appropriate? Um, and to what extent does the health system make use of appropriate technologies? And what are appropriate technologies may vary from context to context. Um, but are these acceptable to communities? And then finally, we ask the questions around community empowerment and, and intersectoral action. Um, and this then would be one way of assessing, uh, possibly using these questions could be used as benchmarks to assess whether a, a, a health system um, does have a primary health care focus or not. Thank you. Mm -hmm.